about that is that it speaks to people. Hey everyone, David here. Today we are very lucky that we have uh, Mr. Jerry Watts all the way from California. He is uh, one of the um, MTD artists, so we're talking with him today. How are you, Jerry? I'm good. What's up, everybody? Yeah. And uh, uh, what, what, what makes you here? Are you having a concert around here? Yeah, I came to uh, Shenzhen mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. just a couple of days ago with, with a good friend of mine, John Diversa. Uh -huh. We played a concert there last night. It was just fantastic. Cool. What what kind of music is that? It's kind of, it's jazz, but it incorporates a lot of different elements. There's a lot of improvisation, obviously. Wow. Uh, but you know, all, all different kinds of fields, not just straight ahead jazz, but wow. you know, all different kinds of grooves and uh, yeah, it's 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 a lot of fun. Wow, sounds interesting. Yeah. Uh, Jerry, you have been very successful musicians. You you've been touring over the world. You recorded some of the top notch artists. Um, are you what what can, can we talk about your background, like like you growing up in a mu very musical family? Or? Sure, no, no. <laughs> really? No, no, no. Uh -huh. no, 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 there's no singing in my house. <laughs> <laughs> is, your, is your parents like a music teacher or something? Or? Not, not at all, not really? at all. Mo most oh. of the people that I associate with now mm. are, are like that. Their parents, their, yep. their parents were musicians, uh, some, of them, some of them very accomplished people. Mm. And they, that, uh, they, a lot of the folks that I know uh, learned from that, and uh -huh, uh -huh. Kind of that was their platform. But for me, no, not at all. We, uh, my family uh, moved quite a bit, so I started on the, in, the, in New Jersey, very close to New York City. That's okay. where all my yeah. family's from. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, I just moved around the United States as I was growing up. And, and uh, at the time, it, was, it wasn't out of choice. It was because mm -hmm. of some uh, economic hardship and, and so forth. And, and at the time, it seemed... Uh, very not, not a good situation. Uh, but what happened is, everywhere I moved, all the kids were into some different music, and I had started playing bass when I was 13, really? right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and everywhere I would go, but they would be into some other kind of music. So I just started, without realizing it, adapting to that, and just kind of taking that in. And I was able to retain the things that I love to do, uh -huh. and uh, at the same time, kind of take in what you like, right? I see. And adapt uh -huh. to that and, and, and learn from it and, and appreciate it, mm -hmm. right? Did, uh, uh, did you get yourself, like, uh, go to school to educate it in, in, in music or you just keep playing with people yeah. and then practice on your own? Good, good, well, always a good question. Now, I was self-taught oh. for the first six years and then wow. I went to, and then I went to school. Oh, uh, really? So I kind of did it backwards. So, uh -huh. so again, when I went to school, everyone was, had been, you know, studying for years and had been in orchestra and did all those kinds of things. So for me, it was a, it was a bit of a journey to learn. Like I didn't know how to read music when uh -huh. I was eight, when I, at 18. I really couldn't read music. And I see. Today, that's a real strong point. And I, and I just I began the journey then and started working on it. Yeah. Really, you 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 pursued a uh, a degree in performance or a composition? Yeah, in, in performance. So I went first of all to a school on the East Coast called William Patterson University. So there was okay. Some, um, you know, really well-known uh, musicians that have gone there. Uh, uh, very popular drummer these days is Mark Juliana. Uh -huh, you know, uh -huh, you might know uh -huh. him. And he, so he went there. I don't know, anyway, all kinds of people went there. And then I moved to California halfway through that. So after two years, I went to, to uh, uh, moved to Los Angeles, and I went to Cal State Northridge. Uh -huh. And I was an orchestral strings major there. So I played upright bass, oh. and I played all kind of, we used to call it legit music, classical music. Oh. So then, um, how do you break into like working as a professor in musicians? Mm -hmm. Did you start with a rock band and get friends? And yeah, exa exactly, really? exactly. I never, I never thought of it <coughs> in terms of breaking in because I was always playing. So I did my, I did a, my, my first gig when I was thirteen, right? And so wow. I kind of yeah, just this kind of what happens, just, just a band playing for dances, uh -huh. but 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 I got paid for it, and I I thought I I like this, <laughs> it's okay with me. And, uh, and, uh, and I just always worked through school, so it never really occurred to me like, I'm going to finish school and then I'll begin working. It wasn't like that. It was the opposite of that. I see. And so, it, I, I, you know, unfortunately, now I, we'll talk about it in a minute, but now I, uh, I teach at a college uh -huh. of music in Los Angeles. And, and uh, <laughs> I was a terrible student in a lot of ways because <laughs> I was always gigging and, and that sort of thing. Uh -huh. uh, who is your biggest 
influenced as a bass player? Uh, oh God, I, I <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just admire and enjoy mm -hmm. uh, so many different kinds of music. It's it's hard. You know, that would be very hard for me to say. Certainly. When I was a kid growing up, that we I listened a lot to the radio, and so I didn't know that I was hearing James Jamerson. I was just a kid. I didn't know that I was uh -huh. hearing. So uh, you know, in terms of s music from the United States, I didn't know I was hearing like the Wrecking Crew from L.A. or the you know the Muscle Shoals people, mm -hmm. right? The Stax people, the, the Philadelphia people, the Detroit people, Chicago people, New York people. I didn't mm -hmm. track with that, but it all influenced me. Uh, I see. You know. So so you're more into like. Playing grooves, that kind of stuff. What about those fusion? No, I'm into er, I'm into everything. Really? You know, and I, I will say, you know, when, when I was when I was a kid, my favorite bass player at that time was Chris Squire, who was a wow. bass player of Yes. So uh -huh. I initially I played with a pick, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, was, I was really all about that. Um, uh -huh. But um, that 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 didn't you know it didn't stick as my primary thing for very long. You know? I see. Yeah. Uh, now uh, you are uh, like like what we mentioned. You have now become a um, base chair of um, Los Angeles Music Academy. Mm -hmm, yeah, now yeah. now called yes, uh, formerly called Lama, and now called uh -huh. the Los Angeles College of Music. A College of Music. Okay. Yeah. So how 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 do you um, like set a program for these kids for kids to come and study? Like um, how to do? Sure. Well, well, it began, at, you know, just as a one-year program. You mm -hmm. mentioned that you went to MI, so yeah. it's probably a similar kind of a diploma program. I see. Then they moved to an AA degree, you okay. know, where you got a degree, and now we offer a bachelor's degree. Really? And in the works is a master's degree. It's pretty, wow. pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, and um, it's um, it's a great it's a great place. You know, it's small. Maybe there's 300 students. Uh -huh. You know, and, and so I like that because I know how each base student is doing. Mm -hmm. The the guys that are on the base staff are all phenomenal. I mean, I just yep. they, you know admire them mm -hmm. yeah, and respect them all so much. Mm -hmm. And they they're they're um, great players. They're great communicators and they're great educators. And that's that's the thing I want. I want to keep that kind of inspiration for the student mm -hmm. there. Um, I had some experiences uh, with teachers where I just felt like they weren't connected with the the essence of playing. You know that that thing that. You know that that you know that, but you can't define it necessarily. But you you can tell in a moment if it's there or not. And so I, it was important to me to have um, and maintain people that that could inspire and motivate uh, from from that point of view. I see. So yeah. so the school is basically a one year program, but you can expand it to. Yeah. Well, no. It's it's a now I, a bachelor's degree, which I think you can do in three years or three and a half years. They have it, and, and you can get a year and a half. Oh. Okay. And so occasionally we have people now that come and get the one-year diploma, you know, I mean, get the one-year certificate, rather. So, yeah, it's, it's different, it's quite different. Yeah, um, you have a very successful um, stu uh, career as a student mm -hmm. musician. What is the, what is the single uh, most important thing that you think it, it, it required to be a successful student musician? Oh, gosh. Um, well, <laughs> I mean, there's all kinds of things we can we could say about what what's required of someone to do that, but I think um, you know just a, kind of a, a real elasticity or flexibility in, in, in your thinking and in, in, in your approach, and uh, and uh, you know with that just remembering why you're there. You're there. You're hired to uh, serve an artist, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Or maybe if you're doing a TV show to kind of serve that music, serve the composer mm -hmm. that wrote that music. You know. Uh, uh, yeah, I think that's probably the most critical thing. I mean, assuming that you're, <laughs> you have, you're good enough to, to be there okay. in the first place, right? Okay. Yeah. I also want to ask you, like you just mentioned, like nowadays is the technology was bringing the music industry into mm -hmm. another level. Right. Uh, maybe it used to be we have to call like in Los Angeles. Maybe you have to call Steve Keck to do the drum tracks. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, it's very different. Right. Like mm -hmm. like how do you look at the the the, the, the Musicians making a living. The technology has been changing. It's less work, in a certain sense, and oh. it's 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 a lot more opportunity. On the other hand, you know, so you know, you, you you could be a brilliant artist and not need the approval of a record company to go ahead and just make your make your own. Just you can just do it. You can do it all in the box. You can do it, you can buy Logic for two hundred dollars and make a exactly brilliant record. You know? So you think it's a good thing or is it is a bad thing? 
I don't, I don't, uh, I don't uh, attach any kind of uh, judgment to it mm. at, at, at all, actually, mm. uh, because because if you do, you can get make yourself miserable. I, you know, so I, and, you know, so I remember the old days, you know, uh, uh, you know. Now that that said, so like, uh, so I live like you mentioned. I live in Los Angeles, and I mm. I, mm. I, I play often with a lot of original projects. And a lot of these just play one or two nights in a few months, but I'm involved in a lot of them. So one of them, you know, is a, there's a guitar player from Japan named Toshi Nagi, mm -hmm. and uh, he has a band called the Buzz Wizards. And I, actually, I'm not even the regular bass player. I just fill in. But I, the other guy's gone quite a bit. Uh, Jurgen Carlson, incredible bass player. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so I get to play, and the, the drummer is uh, Steve Ferroni. Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. And so there's just, <laughs> you know, pl playing with that level of, Kind of pocket and groove and intention, right? It's uh -huh. it's just you know you, you go and do that and then you go let's just say somewhere else with somebody else and, and often people that don't have that experience or that consciousness and it's yeah you have to that's where I, you know you have to work to get your mind just kind of in the moment and kind of accept what you're dealing with in the, in that place and not think it not think any other thoughts. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, you have been an MTD artist for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell me about like how do you like about MTD bass? And yeah, I met Mike in probably 1985. Wow. Right? Yeah, I know, right? It's a long time. <laughs> I, know, I, was, in, I, I was two. <laughs> 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 and uh, I, I uh, got my first MTD bass right, right around that time, 85 or 86. Yeah, it's very, and, uh, very early in, in his business. Yeah, in yeah. Business. So he, was, he was in Hollywood, then he moved outside of Hollywood, yeah. but still in California. Now he lives near Woodstock, New York, and makes his instruments there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, and for, for me, they're just—it's just the best. So, so, um, you know, a lot of the modern instruments uh, mm. are, are platforms. So, so the instrument, a lot of them have that kind of cutaway that comes over the top to the neck, joins the neck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not yeah, like yeah. that. Not like that. But, but, uh, yeah. So the instruments are very stiff and. And they they're they're very similar one to another, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, one of the things that I appreciate and like uh, about Michael's instruments is that um, you know there, there's all these different wood combinations that bring out all these different characteristics. Mm -hmm. He's so careful about selecting the wood, never mind you know the electronics and the hardware and and, and, the, and all the rest of it that you get. You can really find very unique sounding instruments. And and uh -huh. so if you're looking. Particularly for today's modern player, if you're looking for your own voice, right? Mm -hmm. As we say, yeah, that I mean, that to me would be the best, best po of all possible wow. worlds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, or, or you can have, a, you know, get a bass that sounds really great, uh -huh, you know, uh -huh. but maybe not unlike a lot of other mm -hmm. basses made by certain manufacturers. Uh, um, that's good. That's good. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, so what, like. You, you, when you came to Xinjing, Xinjing, mm -hmm. and you were performing with your group, uh, what was what the, what kind of music and what is your project coming up in terms uh, of music? Oh, okay, um, yeah, I came with my friend John Diversa, so I've been uh -huh. playing with him for 14 years. So he has a big band, progressive, John Diversa, progressive big band. Wow! This year we won three Grammys, which is pretty exciting. Yeah, it's pretty wow. exciting. And uh, and also he has a small group, uh, so the small group came because it's uh, oh, fewer people, <laughs> fewer plane tickets, I think. And uh, and we uh, is it a trio we, or a quartet? Uh, it's a uh, the core of it was a quartet. So there's a piano player from Miami. John lives in Miami now. Uh -uh. Uh, Tal Cohen, and then uh, a great friend of ours, a great friend of mine, Chris Chris Wabich, mm -hmm. incredible drummer, and some other musicians joined us. Uh, a Chinese uh, trombonist and a guitar uh, player. Okay. And uh, we're, they're tremendous. Yeah, we we had a, we had a great really great time. Wow. We, we should do that in Hong Kong. You, know, you ought to. Uh, yeah. I'm ready. I'll come back. Come on. Yeah, sure. <laughs> let's, plan it, let's plan it today. Well, what, what's your musical project other than um, this yeah. band thing? Uh, well, you know, so involved with a, a couple of things I really like. There's a, in LA, there's a guy named Dan Rosenboom who has a record label called Orenda. Uh. He's a trumpet player and he, they have, I don't know how many, tons of releases. And he's got uh, his own project that I'm part of. So, uh, there's a, a record we did like it just must be a double album, if wow. you can imagine. And uh, so there's uh, three different rhythm sections on it. So it's me and a drummer named Gary Novak. You mean Gary, Gary Novak? Novak yeah. Yes. 
and then uh, Tim Lafave and, and Zach Danziger, are, uh -huh. and then Vinnie Caliuta and Jimmy Johnson. Wow. Yeah, and so we all played this very difficult. Wow. I actually brought uh, some of the music for our clinic today, today really? in case people want to have a look at it. I don't know. I'm not sure of the level of player we'll have, but but yeah, yeah, it's um really super it's super fun, super kind of avant. It's pretty mm -hmm. on the edge, mm -hmm. and uh, and really fun. Re it's really fun, and then. Uh, uh, let's see. Something else I'm doing is uh, oh, uh, I met when 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 I was working on. I went to Miami to work on this record that that won the Grammy, uh -huh. and there I met. A, there's a rapper on that album. I met this guy okay. is uh, originally from Senegal. He lives in L.A. And so Chris Robertson and I have been working uh, working together with him on a project where it's kind of rap and groove, and it's super it's super fun. Wow! Yeah, sound cool. Sound yeah. cool. Sound like you have a lot of um, project coming up and. Um, um, well, that's good. And uh, Are we, we good? Have, right. yeah, yeah, we have. Hey, thanks uh, so much. Yeah, we have a good time today, right. and uh, it's very nice to have uh, Jerry here. So we we'll talk soon again. All thanks, right. everybody.